Hello, everybody. Today, I want to tell the story about this 1978 ATC 90. Where it came from, what I've done to it, what I think the story is, and what the plan is for the future. So the story of this 1978 ATC 90, as far as its story when it comes to me is concerned, starts back in 2019. At that time, so we're coming up on three years ago from, from when I took ownership of this the first time. Uh, this was purchased by my good friend Joe from Poughkeepsie. Uh, at that time, I didn't have this particular model year. I don't remember what exactly I had at the time, but I know I didn't have a 1978-90. I was gearing up and, and the 2019 front lawn photo shoot was, was coming up. So this presented itself. Uh, Joe, I think we traded something. We usually don't buy and sell from each other. We usually trade, but Joe had this and a uh, another machine, a 1980-110, and he... Uh, we made a trade on that. So that's when I officially took ownership of this. And at that time, it was not running. Uh, this tank was with it. But this tank, I believe if we do a little uh, trike forensic examination science detective work, I could tell pretty quickly that this tank didn't belong with this machine. But this tank was with it at that time. Joe had track that tank down and the carburetor that came on it was another thing that Joe had tracked down. He was just trying to make it a complete machine and, and then the trade deal with me popped up. So I took possession of it back in 2019. It was my placeholder for 1978-90 for a long time. Then, uh, then I did another deal with a, a friend of mine, Carl from Mountain near Buffalo, New York. That got me a little bit nicer 90. Uh, 78. So if, you, if you're not familiar with me or my channel, uh, my goal is to get one of every model year color that Honda made, Honda three-wheeler. I do have a couple four-wheelers. Uh, my friend Vinny likes to call me a quad guy, but I'm definitely, uh, if you look at my ratio of trikes to quads, uh, I think it's pretty apparent what, what my flavor is. But I did that deal with Carl. Uh, brought home a lot nicer 7890 that was running. This one was not running, and I didn't know why. I didn't spend any time trying to chase that out or make it a runner. Just with the sheer number of machines I have, I I don't have time. Uh, so I have to pick and choose what gets my attention. But in that time frame, uh, I made a good friend, uh, my buddy Jim. He's been on the channel. He, has, uh, he was the owner of the three-wheeled mini truck as well as a few other machines that some of which I sold to him over the time we've been getting to know each other. So this was one of them. So I sold this to Jim, uh, not knowing what was wrong with it. He didn't know what was wrong with it. He was going to give it a go and, and see what happened, but he was going through a, a hoarding phase. So he didn't do anything with it. What he did do, he took the tank, he took this tank and two other tanks to get lined. And uh, this tank never did get lined, and it took me a while to get it back from him. But I got it back, and once I saw it, I remembered what I didn't remember was the tank looking like it did. So let me uh, let me show you some close-ups. So as we look at this tank, you can see it's it's got. If we're being friendly, we could say it's got some patina, right? It looks like somebody fried bacon on top of it. Uh, and when you look at the overall condition of the machine, you notice it's nice. Let's pick it apart. It's got a Saddleman seat cover, so that's not original. Saddleman is a good quality seat cover. The downside, in my opinion, is they don't look like factory enough. So Saddleman seat cover. The overall condition of the, the motor and chassis. Let me show you the chassis. So the overall condition of the chassis is very nice. 
It is not all rusted up. The tip of the exhaust is not rusted off and falling off. Toolkit canister is present, but I've checked. There's, there's no tools in there. Not the original tires. They would have been a whammy ass. But the thing looks decent, right? It's missing the mud flap. The front fender. Very nice shape, but it's got this. Now, as a uh, forensic trike detective, that's very a very, very thin portion. So, this, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, is from overinflation of the front tire. Not this front tire. There's lots of clearance in there. But probably the original front tire was overinflated and rubbed the fender, overheated the fender, and made a, a melt mark in there. But back to our investigation here. So the carburetor that came on this, geez, I hope I have a picture of it. I'll send it or I'll post it over the video. That was another thing that did not make sense when I looked at the overall condition of the machine. It uh, was just very dirty, very out of place. So I decided I, I didn't want to mess around with cleaning that carburetor and I've, I've had a lot of success with cleaning carburetors. I've also had a lot of frustration with cleaning carburetors. So with this one, I wanted to just have a plug and play carburetor. Now I don't want to just go on eBay or Amazon and get a, you know, a, a Chinese knockoff because they typically don't run right. So what did I do? I reached out to the man, Mike Pomgren, Vintage Motorsports out in Princeton, Mass. I said, Mike, if I recall right, you have a clone carburetor that may or may not be from a Chinese country that performs as well as OEM. And he said, you know what? I, I do have a lead on one. I think they're for an ST90. Might be wrong. Don't bash me if I'm, I'm too wrong on that. But he said, what I do is I use the OEM bowl because that maintains the the fuel inlet orientation. And uh, and then the upper part of the carb is uh, not OEM. So that's what I bought. He uh, vapor honed the, the bowl for me to make it look as though it, it all fit together. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on that and show you what it looks like. But that ended up working perfectly. All I had to do was adjust the idle, and it was great. So let me show you that. Okay, so without pulling the tank to really get in there, I'm just going to give you this angle. So that the top part of this carburetor is reproduction. The bottom part is a OEM ATC 90 bowl. And as you can tell, it all looks like it goes together. So thank you, Mike at Vintage Motorsports for that. That was outstanding. And uh, we did have to finesse it a little bit, uh, but... I tell you what, the customer service that Mike Pomgren's off, Mike Pomgren offers is top notch. So if for some reason something isn't perfect, Mike will make it right. And uh, he that we had a little snafu with this. Uh, it was a learning process for both of us. And but now it's working perfectly. I put that carburetor on and I didn't really spend a whole lot of time diagnosing anything. I didn't even pull the plug on this. Uh, I'd ordered the carb from Mike after pulling the old one, and when the new one arrived, I put it on, I put gas to it, and I you know, was hoping for the best, So it was because it was clean. It was an overall clean machine, and let me show you. So I had my little bottle-fed carburetor option going on, and uh, I was pulling on the recoil, and there was no spark. So I came around here. And we've all watched the MRC build MRC builds videos on how to get things running. So then I checked the spark plug. And you know, what's going on there? Uh, I popped a new spark plug in it because the old spark plug was not correct. I don't know what I did with that, but keep uh, spark plugs on hand. So I just popped a new one in. Still would wouldn't even pop over. So I took another spark plug and just put it in the the coil wire and laid it on the cylinder. I was getting no spark. So then it makes you wonder, why am I getting no spark? Is it my, is it, 
this doesn't have a CDI. I almost said CDI. Is it my uh, coil? I don't know. Coil's in the frame, so that's not easy to access on this. But behind this cover are my points. This is an early motor, uh, points operated, not CDI. So I've seen and been into enough of these to know that sometimes the points will get just a little bit of corrosion on them. So it's good to get in there with some sandpaper and clean them up, make better contact, and then that will bring spark back in some cases. So I pulled the cover off the uh, the head there where the points should be behind that, and there were no points. So that presented a new problem. I did some internet searching, and I found a place on eBay that had new old stock points still in the box. But then I thought, you know what? I bet Mike Pomgran does too. So I reached out to Mike and I said, Mike, you got these points? He did. For $50, new old stock points shipped to my door. It was around that. I forget exactly what it was, but popped in new old stock points. But in the process of buying them, Mike said, you need this tool to help time it. So I got the tool uh, that he recommended. And not only did he, again, the customer service here is top notch. I bought the part from him. He tells me the tool to get, and he tells me through video how exactly to time it. All right. Perfect timing. I got this uh, little red 90 I'm building for Dan Lammy. Uh, Three-wheel legend. Owns Dasa Racing. Nice guy. Um, so this would be a good one to show you. So on the points, um, what you want to do is get the this uh, points cam, which is like an eccentric cam. You want it on the, so it, it's on the highest point where it's touching this lobe on, on the points, meaning that will open the points at the biggest gap. So, you know, turn your, turn your engine back and forth until you see that, that opening get to its highest point. Um, and then you want to adjust that to 14 thousandths. So you do that by loosening that top bolt and loosening that little bolt there. And then this has a, a groove in it. This will open and close that gap. You can put a screwdriver in here between those two, and that can give you some fine adjustment. Um, and then snug those up, check it again. You just want a little bit of drag, um, 14 thousandths, lock them up, and then that's that's the first part. So get the point set, and then I'll do a timing one next. All right, here we go. Uh, timing. I kind of forgot to mention, make sure you clean. I take some rubbing alcohol or lack of thinner or even carb cleaner and just clean the contacts on those new points. Sometimes they put a, like a, like a coating on it. So it, 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 you know, it doesn't give you the best contact. So just clean those first. Um, and then take your new timing tool, your buzzer, uh, take the lead. Don't, don't connect your white lead yet to the engine. Leave that loose. So put one lead to that white, and then the other lead you just ground somewhere on the on the motor, like you can do it on the head, on a fin, or on the on the chassis. But it, you know I like to go direct to the engine, so ground that. Um, so all right, over here take your take your recoil off, and then I took the the um, the cage off on this one just more so I can show you what you're looking at. Um, but it is easier if you take the cage off because you can see it better. Um, all right, so on the stator, so if you look at the position here, that stator has a line. I if I can get my finger in there, right there. See that line? So that line there, and then on the rotor, there's a few lines. There's a T line, which is right here. It says T with that line. That's that's top dead center. So that's when the engine's pistons all the way at the top of its stroke. Um, that's for setting cam timing, you know, cam chain stuff. But we're not doing that. So we're doing timing. So there's an F mark, and that's for fire, and that's um, that's for setting cam timing, you know, cam chain stuff. But we're not doing that. So we're doing timing. So there's an F mark, and that's for fire, and that's got a line. So that that line and that line has to meet. So you line those up, and then what you want, you want those points to open and close right as that line crosses. So I have it hooked up now. 
Listen, you'll hear it. See, right as I right as I get off that line, it it you know it buzzes. Okay. So if you look close, half mark. Okay. You just crossed it. That's what you want. You want it like and it's it takes a little bit of moving. So now you're moving those those bolts you put down. You want to loosen those up and you're going to spin this plate. So you don't have to worry about the point gap. That will never change. Now you're you're timing when those points open by turning this back and forth. And so it's a little bit of back and forth until you get it. But that's what you want. So you want you want to keep doing that so when when you cross that F mark, it goes off. And that's perfectly timed. See, so nothing, nothing, because this is when it's open, see, or when it's grounding, actually. So it's shut, and then it's open, shut, open. Um, so that's it. So F and T, you want your F mark on that line, and then just keep adjusting this till you get that like that and it makes a difference like if you have it open doesn't buzz till there it'll start hard it won't run right um timing is everything on these things so if you can get it set up like that it, the thing will fire right up um that should do it if you have any questions let me know how can you how can you not go wrong with that so i bought all that hooked everything up and uh, got it timed perfectly spark came back Again, we had the little uh, setback with the carburetor. We worked through that, but now that's back on. Uh, running it off a bottle made this thing run perfectly. I mean, this is a one-pole machine now. <laughs> if it was on, it would be. All right, here we go. That's funny. I always check to make sure your switch is on. It's about 7 in the morning. I find uh, I get some good shop time in the morning. I don't know what, what you guys like to do, but this has been working for me. And now this machine uh, is ready to go to a new home. So this has been a boomerang bike for me. It, you know, I bought it in what, 2019, sold it probably 2020 sometime. I think that's when, when we did it. Uh, it was a non-runner. We replaced points, the whole points assembly, uh, a brand new carburetor from, from Mike Pomgren. We lined the tank with Caswell, new spark plug, and that's it. And now it's a one pole machine. So I'm gonna take some pictures right now so I can post this thing for sale. If you ever wonder what I'm selling, uh, I usually post it on Facebook Marketplace and or my Instagram. If it's a sexy machine, if it's a 250R, which I don't sell that often, like, you know, there's an R in the background, that'll never be for sale. Don't ask. But if I do post something sexy like that, that is high in demand, I will usually put it on my Instagram. But with this 90 being, uh, you know, a smaller machine targeted for kids and, and probably collectors more so at this point, I'll put this on uh, Marketplace, but. You can always reach me at my Instagram, uh, at this old trike, or you can find me on Facebook. My name is Preston Frazier. There's like three of us out there. I'm, uh, I'm the one that, you know, is, is good looking. No, I'm just kidding. We're all good looking. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a great day. See ya.